second. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, I don't often get to wear this shirt on, but when you have not just a badass vegan, but the badass vegan on your show, the day his book comes out that's already number one in vegan diets, you got to wear this shirt. Please welcome and please buy the book right away because when you do it the first week, it helps so much. His name is John Lewis, the original Badass Vegan. Welcome to the show. Nice to see you, John. Good to see you. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Hold up the book again while you're talking because you have to be talking for Zoom. You you got to talk. Yeah, I got to talk. I got to talk. So this is the book here. Today is the day. I'm so proud of it. Um, Man, I, I took my son with me to Barnes and Noble today and he got to see it on the shelves and he was he was so proud. He's only four, but he was like, that's you. I'm like, that's right. That's what Poppy's been up all these late nights for. So that so is absolute. To- well, you're probably going to have to do a book signing there soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. a. I, I signed a couple copies for them, but I'll definitely come back and do some more. Is this your first book? First one. First one. I'm so, so happy. Wow. Well, what is a badass vegan? Because I'm sure everybody that's a vegan wants to become one. You know what? I I believe that everyone that is a vegan is a badass vegan. In fact, um, the original concept behind Badass Vegan wasn't about me. It was about creating a platform like Facebook that was only for vegans where you didn't have to worry about meat popping up in your timeline or dead animals or whatever it was. And that was back in 2010. And then I realized how much that would cost. And then it just turned into be a website for myself at that point. Um, but the, the premise was to be um, a social media platform. And then that I saw how much that cost. And I was like, we're going to have to wait on that. And then it just evolved from there. Did you think of the name yourself? Yeah. Well, you know, my mom always called me badass my whole uh, youth. So it kind of that kind of stuck with it. And then, um, you know, I started my whole fitness career. 90x and on one of my youtube videos that i posted this guy goes man you're one badass vegan and that was before but it always stuck in my head and that's when i i was like you know this is the time to to start this website and when i started it it just turned out perfectly how long ago was that john and how long have you been vegan and how, but you've been a badass your whole life but not necessarily a vegan your whole life yeah, exactly. I've been a badass my whole life. Um, I've been vegan now 16 years. Wow. So going on that. And um, yeah, love love the journey. Never going back, ever. I'm get, get, how, how many people do you think you've influenced? You have a huge social media following, especially I think it's Instagram is your main one. Yeah, Instagram is my biggest one. Um, I'm about 430,000 there. Um, I would say, you know, I, I don't always feel that it's a direct impact on getting people to change. I think sometimes we all work as a team as far as like, you know, they might listen to your show and you might plant the seed and then they listen to something I say, I might water the seed and they listen to Rich Roll and he might cultivate the seed. I think it's a group effort. So I don't think one person is to say they got all these people to go vegan. I think it's just a collective uh, amount of like knowledge being thrown at them to where it actually sticks at one point. And it's a team effort. That is fantastic. How long did it take you to write the book? Was it hard? It was about two years. Um, it, right about two years. It, and it wasn't necessarily hard. It was more about pinpointing your thoughts. Because you got so many thoughts you want to get out, but the book can only be so long. And I think that was the the hardest part was not putting it all in one book and, and spreading it out, but wanting to get it get as much as you could in there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. So well, then that means you got probably got another book in you. Oh yeah. We got a couple more in me. Yeah. That's great. I was looking at this picture you posted on Instagram that just, I mean, my God, it's got like 9,000 likes. And I mean, the transformation of your body was like incredible. Yeah. And a lot of that had to do with the formula that I have in this book. Um, you know, COVID, you know, everybody had their own little journey during COVID. I, I put on a couple of extra pounds. 
um, you know, had some, you know, illnesses in the family, you know, and, you know, you let yourself go a little bit. And then that, that's when I was like, you know what, if I'm going to promote this healthy lifestyle, I need to be an example of it. And then that's when I started journalizing my whole transformation. And, uh, you know, the book definitely has the formula in there as well on if somebody wants to gain, maintain or lose. It doesn't have to just be losing weight. Some people want to gain. Some people just want to get more more healthy. Whatever the case is, it this definitely has the formula because it's not just a cookbook. Like, that's what I want to tell people, like it's an actual how to guide that just happened to have some amazing recipes in there as well. Yeah. There's a cute little video of your son finding your book at Barnes and Noble. Yeah. Yeah. That was amazing. We went this morning. Um, it was a surprise. He didn't know what we were doing. And uh, I asked the, the salesperson to help me find the book. And then once he found it, I was like, what's that over there? He goes, and he's like, that's you. And he like, just, he just freaked out and got all happy. And it was, it was a perfect moment. That's so adorable. Uh, let's see. There's a live viewer named Donna who's saying happy 314 day, John. Yes. Um, so 314 day is that was another reason why I really wanted to drop it this day. So 314 is the area code of St. Louis where I was raised. So today is 314 day. It's a it's a big holiday in St. Louis where everybody celebrates um, St. Louis. So that was the main reason why I wanted to drop the book on 314 uh, being today. That's very cool. Well, you just had a birthday. You and Robert Cheek, who's another one of the most badass vegans. Yes. You guys share a birthday. That was just like, like last week or two weeks ago. Yes, we are twins. So we um, we were born on the same day. I'm a couple years older, but we always call each other twin, actually. He's he's such a good guy. And we, um, you know, I, I actually, he reached out. I actually had pneumonia on my birthday. So I, I just recovered from that, which is crazy. That's why I, I didn't go to Expo West or anything like that. Um, but yeah, he reached out, he made sure I was doing good. He, he's like, Hey, I got a couple copies of the book. I'm handing them out. Like, he's just, a, he's a real good friend. And it just, he's like the epitome of like what vegan means really. Yeah. yeah he should be president of vegan him or Neil Barnard. One of the two. Absolutely. Exactly. So was it your idea to write a book or did a publisher contact you? I had always wanted to write one actually. And, uh, I had been, in the midst of actually doing one, I was going to self-publish one. And right on the time, I was like, you know what? I'm over this. I'm going to just self-publish it. That's when actually Robert reached out and his uh, publisher wanted to work with me. And then it was, that's where it started. And then the journey kept going for two and a half years. And here we are today. Wow. That, I, people don't realize how long it takes to write a book until they've written one. Yeah. And, you know, if it was just recipes, um, you know, I, I did have a co-writer with me, uh, Rachel Holtzman. She helped out tremendously with this. Um, and she even told me she's written quite a few books. Uh, she told me she's like, if it wasn't that you were telling a story, it would have been faster. If it was just recipes, it could have been faster. But the fact that we wanted to tell a story before the recipes, that's why it took so much longer. And, you know, and putting that in order. To where it was actually fun and exciting and not just like a lecture. Do you, do you tell your whole the story of your life? Oh, yeah. I tell the story of, you know, me being 315 pounds as a freshman in high school. Uh, you know, my my family being plagued with so many uh, food related diseases. And we just go through everything. Like, you know, we talk about um, my basketball career, my college career, you know, how I got to this point where I'm at today. Wow. Hey, here's a question from one of the viewers. Elizabeth says, can you open the books? But remember, you have to be talking while you're showing because otherwise it defers to me. Uh, this is the avo salad, avo exo salad, avocado, chickpea. Um, this is the uh, yakisoba. Yaki so uh, I worked with a great, great photographer when it comes to the food. Uh, by the name of Jackie, who is Vegan Yak Attack, if anybody knows. Um, she is great at that. This is the Japanese cold soba. So you can see, very colorful. Um, and then it also, like I said, it's a lifestyle book. So we have pictures, you know, lifestyle, uh, some of me working out, it's me at the beach, um, but very colorful. I didn't want it to be boring and just words. Um, I wanted it to be hardcover. I wanted it to be colorful. 
I want it to be exciting and uh, enjoyment to read. And so it, it turned out exactly like I wanted to. That's fantastic. And I noticed there's also a Kindle version and an audio book. Did you do the audio yourself? I did the audio myself. I apologize if it's not the most exciting, but it was fun to read and it, we had a great time with it. Um, yeah, it was, it, like I said, it was my first time in all aspects, writing and doing the audio. And, you know, I've done television for quite some time and it felt like being back in the studio with all the retakes of the reading and over and over and over again. So the final product came out great. And um, yeah, they're all available between Kindle, audio and the uh, printed version. Yeah, nice. Here's a question from a live viewer saying, do you think you could build the same amount of muscle eating plant foods that are lower in protein like potatoes? I believe you can. I will say this. Um, a lot of the, a lot of times we forget that we build the muscle in the gym or whatever workout you're doing. So a lot of times we try to take the quicker route. So I always say this, and this is definitely not a knock on Richard Simmons, but a lot of times we do the Richard Simmons workout, but we want the body of Tory Washington. And in order to do that, you have to put in that work. So what we do in the gym is what builds the muscles. What we do in the kitchen is what either hides or shows the muscles. So sure, you can eat all potatoes, but you also got to remember what's your goal. If it's to show off those muscles, then it may not be the case to do all potatoes. But if it's just to build muscle and you're not worried about showing it off, go for the potatoes. Have fun with it. Yeah. Uh, people forget about the exercise part sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, that you fitness people are so impressive to me. I remember meeting you on the cruise and you all hung out together and y'all, I mean, what was interesting is on the cruise, very few people spent time in the gym except for your group. You were there every day. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I've, I have a very bad habit, good, but bad habit. I don't miss days in the gym. If I have a scheduled day at the gym, I'm going to get in the gym. I Whether I've been in South Africa, uh, Australia, Anywhere in America, I that's one of my top priorities is to is to as healthy as I can and to and I do understand that you know a body that's not in motion is hard to get back in motion. But if you stay in motion, then it's a it's a lot easier to to continue that progress. Yep. Well, you're very very dedicated. That's for sure. And it was just interesting to me how few people in the whole cruise used the gym, whether they were vegan or not. That wasn't even like people were like, "Well, I'm on vacation, so why should I exercise?" Right. Right. No, I, I I enjoy it. It's funny. I think that's a little weird too. My brother laughs at me. He's like, "You're the only person I know that when you travel, you want to see where's the gym at." Like I, that's part of my like hotel itinerary. I'm looking at that like. And I enjoy working out in different places, like especially different countries. Like I really enjoy that. I don't know what that is, but I feel like just to be in another country and to enjoy that workout atmosphere is always fun for me. Yeah. Do you travel a lot? Yeah, I do. Um, I I average around a hundred thousand miles a year, sky miles. Um, whether it's filming or uh, this year, I'm hosting about twelve events. Uh, nine of those being the vegan street fair, which is in nine cities. I host a vegan block party. Um, and then I'm also speaking at about 10 events as well. So that's a busy schedule. Wow. And so you're always able to maintain the vegan diet, even on the road, I bet. Of course, of course. You know, like they say, it's a lifestyle. It's it's not it's not just a a, a quick fix. It's a it's a lifestyle. So no matter where I'm at, there's always a vegan option. Yeah. Mona wants to know if you have ever have any workout videos. I do have some and I need to get more onto them. Um, but, you know, traveling so much and, and and working so much, I don't have a dedicated videographer to work with me. Um, I did convert my garage into a gym to do more workout videos. I just need to actually sit down and do it and, and drop the excuses. So thank you for reminding me that I need to get more workout videos out and I will be working on that. Nice. Does your son ever work out with you? Oh yeah. My son and my daughter, they, they, they swear they're the strongest kids in the world. And it's so funny, but they, they actually are quite impressive Whether it's squats, push-ups, whatever it is. They, they love to work out. My daughter loves to like watch YouTube videos. Of, of, there's a couple of channels where kids work out for other kids to watch. 
and she'll do like three or four a day. She loves it. So it's good to see that, that, you know, your parenting style and they follow everything you do. They really do watch you. That's incredible. That's, that's funny. I mean, do kids even that young lift weights when they're that young? No, you don't give them weights to lift, but I, I have some plastic weights for them so they can really feel like they're, they're getting the whole gist of it, but they're just basically some, you know, fake weights, but they feel like they're doing it all. Yeah, that's adorable. Uh, you know, Michelle, who's watching live, she's been a wonderful guest on the show, says, what a badass. I love this guy. Well, thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. That's so cool. Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, I, you're right now you're number one in a category called new release and as well as vegan diets, but we got to move it up the charts, guys. And so if you're going to buy the book, it really, really helps the author and it helps veganism in general. If you buy it when the, you know, it's like the first few days, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that really helps out. And like, I, and like you said, it's not just about me. It's about vegan in general. It helps to the next vegan author to also come in and, and we start to build this niche that is more of a lifestyle than just a niche and people start to really, really em embrace it. Um, so yes, please go out, get a copy, get it online, get it at your local store. Uh, it's pretty much all over at this point. Nice. Uh, Jets wants to know what inspired you to first become vegan? My first inspiration was actually uh, my mother. My mother was diagnosed with colon cancer back in the day um, around 2006 at time, I had already tried vegetarianism. And, um, you know, when I found out about the colon cancer, I asked the doctor, like, how did this happen? Things of that nature. And he told me that, you know, this was, you know, um, too much animal protein, fried fatty foods. And, and for me, that was a shock. And I was like, this is not hereditary. And he was like, no, it's a lifestyle choice. And, you know, that, that really hung over my head for a while. And I started doing more and more research. And the more research I saw, I thought, it was the hypertension and the heart disease and high blood pressure. It was so many different things. And so at that point, I was just, well, you know, I'm a big believer in learning from my mistakes, but I'm a bigger believer in learning from other people's mistakes. If I see something that's really not working for them, I'm going to take that knowledge and apply it to my life. And, and that's when I, I started veganism. And it wasn't to start a company. It wasn't to start a movement. It was literally for my health. And then as I stayed with it, you know, more and more happened for me. I started to learn more about the animals, started to learn more about the human rights aspect of it, more about, you know, the earth, uh, everything. And then so now, you know, I know some some people say that if you don't go for the animals, you won't stick it out. But I started for health reasons. And the longer you stay with it, the more I learned. But I was open to learn more, too. And I think that helped. Yeah, I think that's fantastic when people are in it for more than one reason. Did did your mom go vegan as well? No, she didn't. She 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 was very very old school. You know, um, she you know she she actually grew up picking cotton as a kid. Uh, our family owns the number one barbecue restaurant in all of Arkansas and Tennessee, which is I'm really the the, the odd man out because of that. But you know, uh, she did make it to 85 years old. She passed away back in uh, July of last year. And, um, you know, she she was so supportive, though. I will say that she never went vegan, but she told everybody about her vegan son and, and, and what I was doing. So that was that I'm glad I was able to make her proud with everything I did. Oh, that's wonderful. But like, gosh, I mean, it would have been, I'd be cool to see what would have happened if she had become it. Or just She just wasn't interested in trying it at all. Did, is there anything on the menu vegan at that restaurant? I don't think so. I And, you know, to be honest, I haven't been to that restaurant in years, like <laughs> decades. So I, I'm not even sure myself. Okay. Here's a question from a live viewer. I've had rheumatoid arthritis for a year now. I went on a plant-based diet and lost six kilograms. I am 48 kilograms before. I lost lots of muscle. How can I gain muscle? Again, um, the muscle, again, has to be the resistance. Um, now we're not saying go out there and go so hard that you get injured, but you also have to look at it at a long-term marathon type of aspect, not a sprint aspect. Your muscle gaining journey is a marathon. It's going to take time. And a lot of times we live in the microwave age where we want everything tomorrow or, or even yesterday. So in that aspect is I would start off with calisthenics. 
find find your range. How many push-ups can you do? How many squats can you do? How many things can you do without added weight? Then you start adding small increments of weight to what you're doing. And then the resistance is what builds that muscle. But you have to be patient with it. And then you can add more weight and more resistance as time goes on. The, 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 the professional bodybuilder that you're looking at online or the elite athlete that you're looking online, I promise you, did not get that body yesterday. They've been working over it year after year after year and building upon it. Yep. Let's see. Are there 314 pages in your book? Uh, that's a good question. Now, that would be funny. Somebody posted that that looks like a lot of content. Wouldn't that be funny? Because you love the number 314. So but it's 320, 320 pages. But All right. We can yeah. tear six of them out. No, I'm just kidding. That, that's, <laughs> that's very cool. That's very close. So somebody who's watching live named Janice said, were you able to inspire any other family members or friends? Yes, I actually have a cousin who's a veterinarian who I finally got to go vegan. Um, that was that was that was kind of easy though, because I was like, wait a minute, you're actually helping to fix the animals, but then you're going to eat animals. Like you don't see anything wrong with that. And it took a while for her to really see it, but once she did, um, that's definitely one of the things. And I have some other uh family members that have gone as well, but she sticks out just because. You know, as a kid, we both wanted to be veterinarians. And then I went into more of the business route and sports route. And she stick she stuck with the veterinarian. That's so cool because, you know, I it was a really a, a remark from a, a veterinarian 46 years ago that really solidified my choice to go vegan. Because she said, if you love animals called pets, how can you eat animals called dinner? And I'm like, you know, you're right. And I mean, but but a lot of people never make that connection, do they? Never do. We never do. Well, some of us do, but a lot of us and a lot of us don't want to make the connection. I, I believe that's where addiction actually plays a part in it. Um, a lot of us don't realize how addictive food is. And, you know, the government messes up on a lot of things. But the one thing they got it right is when they called it the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, because food is a drug. It's the most addictive thing you put in your body. And when you're addicted to something, you'll find any excuse to continue to put that in your body or continue to hurt yourself or whatever the case is. And I believe that with that food being so addictive, we don't want to know the truth about it because that's going to ruin our addiction. And I, I, I really believe that that's the case in that, in that when it comes to meat and dairy. Yeah, I, I agree. It's just that food addiction until recently was never talked about in general or even in the vegan community. So there's a live viewer named Philip that's wondering what's happening with the film. Maybe you could talk about the wonderful movie that you were in. If anybody, if, if they're wondering what uh, Phil's talking about. So if anybody has seen What the Health, um, I co-directed and co-produced the follow-up film to What the Health. Um, Hollywood is a very funny place. It's funny to have on a Hollywood uh boulevard t-shirt uh, today and we're just still waiting we're working on distribution we've had some great talks um we've talked to some production companies that are looking to work with us to put it on a larger platform because the thing is while we were about to like almost just release it we do have a budget that we have to pay the person back that funded the movie so it, it wouldn't be right to just give the movie out without paying that person back and you know, Keegan and I, my co-director, we won't see a dime out of this, but we believe that it is important to get to a larger audience. So that's what we're waiting on right now is the production and the platforms to come together and be like, you know what, this is a go. Because believe me, it took five years out of my life to, to complete and I would love to release it. Believe me, I'm not holding on to it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so, but is there a way somebody could see it for a fee? Like, a, is there a way to rent it? Or have you contacted the streaming platforms? Is there a chance it could be on one of them? Um, we're still waiting on that. But as far as like letting people see it now, we can't do that because what happens is when you let people see it, the platform is like, well, why would we put it on our channel if people can just go see it? So it's a catch 22. It's just, yeah. Oh, well, we hope that everyone will be able to see it soon. And Billy says, what's the name of the film? Uh, the name of the film was They're Trying to Kill Us. We actually are working on a brand new title, which I can't say yet, but I think people will really love um, 
the direction that it's going in with the title. Great. Thank you. A live viewer saying, can protein powders and protein isolates ever help? Are there any downsides to them? I'm not sure to help what, like build muscle, but um, and what do you think about those products? I believe as, as a person that owns a protein shake company, shameless plug, sorry about that. I do say that you do not have to consume protein powders. Again, as a person that owns a protein shake company, you do not have to consume protein powders. But as far as convenience goes, and as far as getting, I guess, more bang for your buck, depending on what you, where you are in your in your daily schedule, um, if you're at a quick lunch break, if you're somebody that only has a 15 minute lunch break, and you can grab a shake rather than get a whole, you know, uh, full course meal, and you're sitting down, you only got 15 to 20 minutes for that lunch. The protein shake helps out. If you are counting macros like protein, fats carbs the protein shake may be less in the carb department or less in the fat department and more focused on the protein to fit your daily schedule that's where you look at it at as far as a necessity no it's not a necessity but it definitely can help depending on what your path is that you're looking to do with your health and your fitness nice thanks let's see i didn't realize you traveled so much i, I is one of the uh the veg things you're speaking at, is it by any chance the one in Los Angeles? Uh, I won't be speaking in LA, but I will be hosting the Vegan Street Fair next weekend, uh, which is the 26th in North Hollywood. So we'll be hosting that. Everybody come out. If you if you, if you you bought a copy of the book, I will autograph the book if you come on out uh, to any of the events, actually, not just the LA event. But if you buy it and there will be copies for sale at the event, too. But like we said, the first week is so important when it comes to book sales as far as like New York Times bestseller and making sure that it it, it falls in that category and stays on the top of the list. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm on your website, but does it show your speaking in general, your, your schedule? I don't have a schedule on there. I, I started to do it and then everything between filming and flying and Everything. I'm glad that I actually got the book up there. I'm actually shocked that I was that I was able to put everything up there for the book. Oh, that's great. Okay, yeah, it'd be fun to see you in person again. Let's see if there's and uh, somebody saying you should get together with the vegan zombie so he can finish his movie. <laughs> I guess he's doing a movie. Well, yeah, we can't find. There's no schedule, unfortunately, Mark. But I, I mean, I'm sure like you'll probably post on your social media if you're going to be somewhere, right? Yeah, I always post, and I, I think that's. I've also noticed that I've gotten more engagement by not posting it on my, my website, but posting it on my actual social media so that people can see and follow through that way. That's great. That's and congrats great. to Vegan Zombie. I haven't talked to him in a while either, but if he is working on a movie, that's amazing. Yes, that'd be cool. So let's see. Uh, Chris says, John, we love you. And I put I posted guys in the chat in the show notes, the link to his Instagram where he is the most active. And Billy says, do you think people can build more muscle at any age or does it become harder? Well, that's where we have to understand that the word harder does not mean impossible. And we get <laughs> that confused a lot. A lot of times, like even when it comes to vegan period, people are like, yeah, well, it's harder to gain muscle as a vegan. And I'm like, but harder doesn't mean impossible. It, it, may, it may require more work. It may require a little bit more dedication but it's possible. Um, my mentor, Jim Morris, uh, who passed away some years ago, but in his 80s, he was still the most ripped up vegan you probably ever seen in his 80s. Um, so it can be done. It's just the amount of dedication that you have. Because a lot of times we'll we'll lie to ourselves and, and we'll tell ourselves, well, you know, I only had like a little cheat here and a little cheat there and I only ate, you know, half the piece of cake here and a whole piece of cake there, but it all adds up. If you have a goal in mind, you kind of got to stick to it until you reach the goal. Um, we're not saying you never have, you know, fun, but you do have to have discipline when it comes to that goal. Absolutely. I'm going to be having, uh, you, you know who Jack LaLanne was? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Right. I Well, you, know, you never know. I'm going to have his wife. His wife is turning 97 on Sunday. She's going to be on the show for her birthday. I mean, it's, it, I get so inspired by seeing older people that still work out every day. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I think that's why 
I love Chef Bobette so much. Like she just. Oh my God. She can do her age in push ups. She's incredible. That's amazing. I can't even do my age. I'm only 46. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me see. Some of the recipes, I, I, I pulled up what some of the recipes in the book are. I only have a digital version. Otherwise, I would hold it up. But some of them, there's here's some, for example, sweet, th- sweet potato soup, St. Louis barbecue with jackfruit, yucca fries, apple pie, salad with grilled avocado, asparagus, pea shoots, chickpea, and broccoli. So what what is your favorite recipe in the book and what do you think are the most popular ones? I would have to say, and I'm looking for it now, it would have to be the Badass Beautiful Mess. Um, And the reason why that is my favorite dish is because I developed that recipe when I was dead broke, had no money to even drive to the grocery store. And I looked around my kitchen and I had these ingredients. And I was like, you know what? If I put this together, this will be great. And it and it dispels that myth about veganism being so expensive. It's just when you buy a lot of products, it can end up being expensive. But if you buy ingredients, it's not as expensive from what I've from what I've learned. And so, um, but it's it's uh, a bit of quinoa with um, sweet plantains on it, guacamole. Uh, grilled onions, and it's just, it's so good. It's just, it hits the sweet and the savory. It's filling at the same time. And like I said, it doesn't cost a lot to make. And and while we go through some other questions, I'll find it in the book so I can show it. That sounds great. Well, one of the questions, and it is from Rachel, what are your thoughts on soy? I believe that soy got a very bad rap. Um, now, is there some bad soy out there? Of course there is. But, you know, the bad soy that got the rap is the soy that they're feeding the animals that everyone's eating, which is funny because most meat eaters that are warn you about going vegan and eating soy, they're still consuming the soy because they're eating the animals. Um, soy has been around since B.C. Uh, and this is not trying to put religion on anybody. I'm just using the timestamp. Soy has been around since B.C. Uh, it is not man-made like they want to say um the people get the phytoestrogens and the estrogens confused they're not the same nobody and i I repeat nobody is being rushed to the hospital because they had too much soy like nobody comes in for you know why they have to have emergency surgery oh man they had tofu today and their heart exploded and this that's not the case so it does get a bad rap is there bad soy out there? Yes, there is. But if you're looking at organic, non-GMO, even sprouted soy, you'll be perfectly fine. Mm. Unless you actually have a soy allergy. Uh, um, if you actually have a soy allergy, then no. But in general, if that's the case, you should be okay. Perfect. Here's a question from Chris. <laughs> Excuse me. Some bodybuilders recommend high fat diets short term for muscle definition. What are your thoughts, especially for women? My thoughts are depending on the goal. Um, as a person that was obese once already, uh, I don't really consume extra fat because my body uh, loves fat. So I kind of stay away from uh, extra amounts of fat. Now, that can be good if you're in the process of bulking, um, which I have done that. And in fact, I'm actually in the process of that now. And I'm consuming around 85 grams of fat myself, which is high for me. But my end goal is towards the uh, beginning of the summer, uh, which is, well, end of summer, August. So it'll taper down as it goes along. Now, you're not going to stay at 85 grams or, or around that area for a full year, but I can see it being a benefit for a short term uh, effect. And this is the picture of the badass beautiful mess. As you can see, you can see the guacamole, the sweet plantains, the grilled onions, the quinoa. <clears throat> and uh, it's amazing. It just, it just tastes amazing. Nice. Uh, Wynn wants to know if you can sing the badass vegan rap, please. No. <laughs> that, oh my gosh, that was, that was so long ago. Um, man, I like, uh, 
Okay, so today we're gonna say, oh man, it's been a while. Okay, so today we're gonna say the game. You might. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, maybe later on. Uh, it, it's got to come back to me. That that literally, I made that rap song. It's been like seven years now. That's been a long time, and I haven't sung it at all since. It, it was on iTunes. It was on Title. It was on quite a few streaming services, but. I, I am not a rapper by trade. That was actually a satirical rap just to kind of push the, the vegan movement. Do you think we can still find it somewhere? Oh, it's on YouTube. I have it on my YouTube channel. Okay, I'm going to look for it and I'll at least compost, post the link while I'm asking you the next question. What is your root workout routine? Wow, my mine's a little, uh, it's fun. I like, I've, I've come to the place where I have fun with my workouts. I believe that, you know, back in the day, it, it used to be the concept of if you hate a certain movement, do more of that movement. Like, I'm not in that place anymore. It's like, let's have fun with this workout. I'm not doing anything outlandishly crazy. Um, you know, more power to the people. I used to do CrossFit for six years. I'm not doing CrossFit movements as much as I was. More of a resistance training. Uh, my cardio is a lot of walking. Actually, I do a lot of walking until, um, which I just did this past December, I ran a half marathon in Jamaica, which I'm doing it again. So I'm doing that every year as a, as a tribute to my mom. Um, so I'll start training three months out. So around September, I'll start doing more, uh, running, but for the most part, my, my training is, uh, resistance training with weights and, um, my cardio consists of, a lot of walking. I love to walk around my neighborhood. There's a park close to my house. I'll do that. Um, I might do an hour walk easily a day. And um, it's so funny. I used to laugh at my mom when she did walking because I was such a, I, you know, I played basketball my whole life. And I used to be like, that walking is not doing anything. I don't understand why she's always walking. And now look at me, you know, 40 years later, and I'm doing the same thing she was doing. That's great. So um, Billy made a super chat donation. Thank you. What even uh, greater would be to buy the book. I posted the link, but thank you so much, Billy. And Rachel wants to know, what are the sources of fat in your diet? Ch chia, flax, hemp, avocado, tofu. What other sources of fat do you eat? I, I really don't, I, especially I'm in, if I'm in training mode right now, I don't really go outside the realm. Like, like you said, avocado, and it's so funny. I'm not a big avocado fan. I'm a huge guacamole fan. Unseasoned avocado is not my jam. I don't know why. I, for other people, more power to you. But for me, avocado without seasoning just doesn't hit the, the same uh, palate for me. But um, avocado, um, from time to time, I use MCT oil. Uh, for anybody that's ever looked at that. Uh, coconut. Uh, sometimes I'll use that, um, tofu definitely. And, um, yeah, I kind of keep it basic. I don't really go outside. I'm not using vegan butters or anything like that. Um, I, from time to time, I may use some, some different cooking oils like grapeseed or something like that, but yeah, I really don't add too much fat. Um, like I said, I, I already feel like I have enough fat, uh, sales that are waiting on me to pouring a lot more. Uh, so I don't put too much in there. Last time I think you had on the show, you said you, 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 are you still eating like one meal a day? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I eat about an hour a day. Um, usually my hours around seven to 8 PM. Um, I have changed it up a little bit at this juncture because, uh, working it's funny. I'm working with my best friend slash trainer, which is Tori Washington. And right now I'm in a bulking stage. So I'm eating a little, I'm eating two hours a day and instead of my normal one hour a day. Um, so I'm stepping outside the box and adding <laughs> more calories than usual, but I have seen, um, a huge improvement in my size. Um, a six pack isn't where, where it was or normally is, but that's okay. We'll get it back by August. <laughs> Nice. So I bought the book. Thank you. Billy's going to get the book. Appreciate that, guys. And Rachel said, what is your protein powder company called? Um, my protein powder company is called Nature Aid. Uh, you can find that at Costco. Um, but we also have a brand under Nature Aid, which is called Vegan Smart, which you can find that at um, Whole Foods, uh, Target, 
uh, Amazon Prime. So we're, we've been working really, really hard to get it out there. And uh, you can find us under Nature Aid and Vegan Smart. Nice. Costco, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that was your company. Pretty I cool. Yeah, very cool. Let's see. Uh, Chris says, shout out to Tori. He was on the show. Yeah, he has got an incredible physique. He, he works out a little bit. <laughs> beautiful i mean that's like it's like he's somebody sculpted him you know yeah yeah but yeah that's like that's one of my best friends we've been best friends over 10 years now and like um we always train together and i told him so the the funny thing about the way i'm training right now i told him i said he has a show um the olympia masters in romania in august and i said you know what i'm gonna train exactly like you the whole time so that's what we're doing. So I'm actually training exactly like he is and eating, eating to my body weight because I'm I'm taller and heavier than him. But as far as my ratios of protein, fat and carbs, they're the same as what his is. Oh, I, I think, think I might have I, I muted myself because I think I might have found the vegan rap and I could almost play it if this is what it's called on YouTube. Wise words by badass vegan seven years ago. Could that be it? That sounds about right. <laughs> because I, I mean, if you want, I mean, I, I'm trying to see who owns it just so I don't get a copyright strike. It's under whose channel uh, live vegan sm live vegan smarts channel. I actually might have a better version because there's one where the we we were having problems with the um the beat uh the production of it and for some reason we found it all out but I can I can send you the actual uh the version that That's is great. at least I could from I could put it at least in the show notes if there's a link to it yeah because people really want to see that I had no idea you were a rapper wow very cool. I didn't either. You have so many, you're like a real entrepreneur. You the only thing you don't do is make shirts that say vegan badass. Well, I well, because you know, vegan badass is somebody else. So I was you're I kidding. believe that's uh, that's Patrick uh Patrick, I always say his name wrong, so I apologize. Uh the strong man, Patrick. Patrick Baboobium is vegan badass. He's vegan badass and I'm badass vegan. And we didn't we didn't even know each other existed. Oh, that's hilarious. He's been I didn't realize. Oh, so I'm wearing a shirt for him instead. Hey, you just sent it to me. Do you want me to play it, John? Sure, you can play it. Okay, hold on. I just gotta I gotta do this correctly. I got a screen share. Hold on. It takes a minute. Okay, I gotta unmute. Hold on. You guys, you asked for it. We're gonna play it. Don't laugh too hard, everybody. Okay, here it is. You wanted the rap song. Let's play it. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Ben Bass Vegan. As you know, I'm not a pound of butter. I thought I'd drop you a little dope of hip hop on your soul. So hopefully, after you get done with this, you'll be a little vegan smart. You ready? Let's go. Okay, so today we're gonna change the game. You might change up your lane or remain the same. You might think I'm a lame or just plain insane. But here's food for thought to sustain your brain. That was such a fault. There's education out there that nobody taught from the time you were born. They got you ready for GM or pork as a kid when they introduced you to a sport. Man, they put anything together because they know that you'll eat anything they tell you. Fast food, fries, chicken, finger licking, good for you to eat. Should you question the meat? Better believe it. They got meat if you leave it. Out for a year, bacteria won't even eat it. Neither with the flies. We done with the lies. And we just got to speak truth to your lies. Get fast food everywhere, destroying people. They don't care. We only came here just to elevate life. Tell them what's right. Eating smart, being smart from the heart. I'm speaking wise words for the badass vegans. Yo. We only came here Decision. Never too late for your redemption. Get busy dying and get busy living. Yo, I tell you though, who got the answers? World Health Org of this about cancer. 80% less chance of cancer at your feet if you cut out the processed meat. But yeah, we all know how to process beef. Yeah, I read it, but it ain't stopping me. Before you say you're not taking pork out your lives, read the documentary Forks Over Knives. Conspiracy and earth leans the first thing you should see. You find meat is the worst thing for your body. I'm talking to somebody who's making that change. Right now, so let's talk.
we don't expect you to follow to the letter. Just trying to give you the way to do better. Just trying to get you to see the whole setup. And we're here to give you a hand if you let us. Quick stop. Let's write the shit. Send this fight to the world star hip hop. Cause we in a fight. Man, we fighting for our lives. For the right to live, man, we fighting for our wives. Fighting for our kids. If this was a person threatening the lives, man, you will fight to the end. A lot longer, ignore the miss, you become a lot stronger. Pass on the way, there's protein and greens, mushrooms, broccoli, almonds, and peas, little soybeans. Man, it's a ton. I got 99 problems, but protein ain't one. Yo, let's go everywhere, just go and build on everywhere. Yeah. 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 Shout out to the noobs, vegan smart, nature aid, stick, my boy Styles P, Tory Washington, Donald Thompson, vegan food share, and everybody else out there. Much love. We out. Wow. 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 That was amazing. That was a while ago. <laughs> Man, you are, I mean, that was really, really good. Like you have talent as a singer, seriously. Thank you. I, I, I don't think there'll be much more of that, but I, I, Music has always been a, a huge part of my people life. People just, I mean, people love it. Whoever the viewer was that mentioned it, thank you so much. I didn't know about it. I mean, that was amazing. I mean, you're really, really good. I mean, you could have a career as an artist. Sir. And you had Tori Washington, and it looked like Moby was in there, too. Yeah, Moby, uh, Styles P, um, Little Caesar. Yeah, it was quite a, quite a few people in there. Uh, Tia Blanco was in there. I mean, that uh, is amazing. Uh, people, Michelle says that was incredible. Uh, Linda says that was awesome. People love that. I'm so glad that you found it because that was, I, I, I thought it was great, really. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, you, you could open with that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you're good. You, and then the, I, might get, I might get back to it one day. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, you got your fingers in a lot of pies. So, and now our our job is to get this book on the NYT New York Times bestseller list, guys. Okay. Today's the first day, and that's I think the the next four days that are crucial. So today being yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Because if you're gonna get it, don't wait because it helps so much when when you buy yeah. the book early. It really does, guys. Both for Amazon ratings and for New York Times bestsellers. And the more vegan books that are on that list the more we can get publishers and the attention of other people. Julie says, awesome. Love the rapping badass vegan. Uh, Wynn says, I cry every time. 99 problems and protein ain't one. That's a great saying too. Wow. Yeah, I remember saying that. And then I didn't think it would go like viral like it did. And, and everybody started using it. I was like, well, that's good. I, I appreciate it. No, that, that is fantastic. And I had no idea about it. I could just put that on my channel. Like this is a promo to buy your book. I mean, seriously, if that would help because, because people don't always have time to watch a longer video, but who, you know, everybody would watch that song. Let's make it go viral again. You know, let's do it. Why not? Uh, Alexa says I pre-ordered it and just got it in the mail and I can't wait to start reading it. Thank you so much, Alexa. And KJ says, I'm going to send the wrap to my 33 33 ish year old boys to help push the vegan life. It's so great when like, you know, handsome muscular men like you and Robert Cheek do it because, you know, you can reach a whole different audience than I can, you know, mostly my audience is women and older, but you know, when people say, well, it's not manly and you can't build muscles. Okay. Yeah. Tell, tell that to you and Tori, you know. Right. <laughs> well, exactly. I, always, I always say, you know, what's, what's not manly about all your man parts working. You know, like <laughs> you would think that knowing that would be enough to get men to stop eating meat or just that scene in Game Changers. But like you say, I think it's food addiction or culture or something. I can't figure out why more people. Yeah. Aren't. It's, hey, a, it's, it's definitely an addiction. You know, what's interesting is you've been vegan as long as I you've been alive is exactly how long I've been vegan. Wow. Yeah, that that is that is some years right there. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the old G. I'm the old G. I'll be here in my walker, you know, in 40 years doing these interviews. And you don't even be using a walker. You just be walking past all the yeah, other people. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna well, hopefully I won't use a walker, but I was just joking. Who knows how long we'll be doing this? Well, man, I just really um wishing that every success for the book. You've you seem to have gotten off to a great start. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Yes, yeah. I appreciate all the love and I appreciate you having me on. Well, I'm sure. And I appreciate you coming back because it was so funny. You were here uh, three hours earlier because you, you know, it was 11. 
but it yeah. was uh, it was two o'clock, but you were doing two o'clock your time. So thank you so much for being able to come back. And actually, this works great because I think you were in the car the first time, and this actually looks a little bit, you know, your screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, so I was this, definitely on the, on the go. Yep. And Kathy says, you're so great. All the success to you, John Lewis. So yeah, the badass vegan. Well, thank you so much, John. This has been wonderful. Thank you. I hope to see you in person So. Same here. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for Dr. Stefan Esser. He'll be talking about orthopedics.